Here, um, Moose on Van Lounge. Uh, this is the second year of this incredible lounge and uh, doing things like this, meeting some filmmakers and artists up close. And uh, my name is Jeremy Parsons. I'm from Reels Channel. It's a cable network. And uh, we are TV about movies. You should check us out, please. You can check out our website, reels.com. We're also on satellite cable all over the country. And we have a daily entertainment news show, a movie centric entertainment show uh, every day called Hollywood Dailies that I do so much. So there's some plugs. Um, Cool thing here, let's go ahead and welcome Eduardo Sanchez and Gretchen Lodge. We are really happy to be you guys. Um, this movie, Lovely Molly, is actually going to be available on Movies on Demand on July 16th. It is more than a month before DVD, Netflix, and Redbox, which is impressive. So if you want to see it first, you'll see it here. Before we get into this movie, we're actually going to watch a little clip. So whether or not you've seen anything about it, you're going to get a little taste of it over here. So if you want to rearrange, you guys are right in front of it. No, the they course. got one over oh, there. Oh, it's over here. Okay. It's all on both sides. Look at this. Both sides. Surround sound. Surround video. So let's <laughs> watch away. <laughs> synopsis of what's going on here and a little bit of what we saw there. Uh, the book is about this woman named Molly Reynolds who is very lovely at first. Uh, she's, uh, she gets to see her get married at the beginning of the movie and she moves into this house that she grew up in with her husband and then things start going badly. Um, and here she hears, she thinks she hears something downstairs and she goes and investigates and there's this noise at the door. Um, and then she thinks she's crazy and she's, but she's gone through these things before. Basically, she kind of goes down this, you know, hell hole of, you know, um, of drug use, and psychosis, and possible satanic possession, and um, yeah, it's a real family-friendly film. <laughs> it's just a really dark film, but she's amazing in it, and it's just, you know, it's just, it's very, uh, you know, very uh, atmospheric and scary and creepy. Very first big movie. For you. And as we saw, I don't know how you memorize all the dialogue right away, right? <laughs> Lots of lines to keep straight. But no, there's obviously uh, a, a big challenge to, to carry a movie as, a, as an actress. Talk to me about that and coming on board with this project with the nerve there and about how he kind of, you know, ushered you through. Um, you know, what first struck me, because um, we talked a lot when I was first you know, reading the script, we were, we were talking about, you know, the potential of taking on the role, and, you know, it was just so good, the writing was so good, and the story really struck me as um, this really truthful recounting of, of, of what she was going through. It wasn't, you know, it really struck me that a lot of times a story like this um, isn't taken to, like, its dirtiest, and sometimes often glamorized, and so I, it really struck me that, like, this could be, like, a really true Especially with like a little bit of the um, first person footage that's involved in it. Um, that it could just be like a really truthful, um, raw, close up account of this sort of thing. You know, and, and the thing is that, you know, it takes place with, you know, she's never come from like a, a well off family. So she's having to deal with the problems of like not really knowing what's going on psychologically with herself, um, with the constraints of like financial problems and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's sort of something that, that you know, it, it's, it's not just like a more common story. Um, okay. And it really appealed to me to, to take it as far as I could go, okay. truthfully. And, you know, Ed from the beginning was, uh, you know, there with me. Yeah, because the, I mean, the material, when I, was, when I cast her, I was like, I mean, have you read the script? And she's like, yeah, I love it. I'm like, all right, have you read We yeah, Have to yeah, Do? Have like, <laughs> really? you read We Have to Do with this script? Because, you know, the, it's, you know, it was like she was saying, it's like, if I wanted to make a movie that, like, pulled no punches or came as close to, like, pulling no punches, you know, pulling no punches as possible. Um, and, um, and, you know, I cast her because I trusted her. She just seemed like she was fearless and she was really willing to do, um, <clears throat> to go to places that, I knew, you know, other people were not going to be able to go to. Um, and, you know, my instincts were right. Basically, what I, what I did for her, the, you know, and really the, the performance is completely her. I mean, it, it really, the only thing, the biggest thing I did was I just built this kind of uh, atmosphere of trust around her um, with the right crew and just the way, you know, I gave her enough freedom, but I gave her enough, you know, guidance. And I, and I just kind of pushed her along and I just made sure the cameras were rolling, basically. Uh, to just to catch the magic that she made. But yeah, my, my big thing was like trying, I knew it was going to be a difficult role, so I had to create this kind of bubble around her 
um, where she felt comfortable enough to you know, do what she needed to do. Yeah. Where did this story come from? What's the word? Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, a, a, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> Something happened when I was young. And, uh, the, uh, uh, no, I, I want to make it like an exorcist kind of movie since I saw The Exorcist when I was way too young and it like really scarred me for life. Uh, I can't even watch like the making of that movie. Yeah, that freaks me out. Um, and I've always wanted to make some kind of possession movie, but I didn't think it was going to be like this. I thought it was going to be more like, you know, holy water and the priest comes in and saves the day and stuff. Um, and I wrote the script, I don't know where it came from, and by, you know, I was pretty much on page 90, and I was like, well, the exorcist guy hasn't come in yet. And I was like, all right, I guess this is, a, this is an exorcist movie without the exorcism. Um, but it just kind of, you know, it was something that, that I really wanted to do, that I wanted to do for a long time, and it just kind of flowed out, and I don't know where it came from. Very good, that's cool. Um, let's open up for questions. I'll ask some more questions as we go. But th is there anything that anyone would like to ask right here in the front? Um, I know from the website there's a lot of like, you know, some little issue of players, like the Sockets backstory. Um, I was wondering how much of that you created before uh, you actually shot the movie and then discovered the Jane Fair character. If you had that information. We, um, we actually shot it as we were shooting the movie. We had like a transmedia unit that was doing things um, you know, with the actors and with the how the locations and just whatever assets we were using for the film. Um, and my partner, Greg Hale, is, is the one that really uh, managed all that. Um, and uh, for us, it's just like, you know, when you, when you make a movie, you come up with a lot of ideas that you, don't, you can't use in the movie. In fact, you probably come up with more ideas that are not in the movie than, than are in the movie. So this, for us, it's kind of a story extension because it's a good opportunity for us to put a lot of stuff that we came up with that didn't quite make it in the film into something else that, that the audience can get into either before they watch the film or after they watch the film. And for her, for the characters, I didn't want them to know too much. And also I wanted I, I kinda wanted them to I wanted to give them just kind of a time frame where they all knew like, okay, you guys were born here and you guys were sisters and you guys, you know, you got married here and this is the relationship. But everything else I kinda left it up to them because I wanted, you know, them to tap into their own um, their own experiences, and I didn't want them to have to memorize a bunch of stuff, you know. Um, I, I mean, At the same time, like when we first started rehearsals, you, you did give us a nice timeline. Yeah, line yeah. Of stuff, so we knew a little bit where we'd come from. Yeah, the, lo the logistical yeah. stuff that had to match, you know. Um, but there then, were like little hints as well. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like we never explained why really your mom died, and you know, so and really what happened to dad and stuff, so. Because to me, it's like it's it's kind of a mystery in the movie, and I wanted it to be sort of you know. And she, I think in the film, she's trying to figure out what happened to her too. So I kind of wanted that to be you know uh, a mystery to you as well. So you said um, that you wanted to give the actors the freedom to, to tap into some, some of their own experiences with a little bit of information that you gave them. So what did you tap into? What kinds of? I mean, just based on the content, is there anything at all that was relatable in terms of what this woman is going to go through? <laughs> <laughs> Not like down to exactly. You've never been possessed by anything or um, no? Okay. I had an exorcism. Okay, one uh, exorcism. Once, Good. Once, Just once. once. Yeah. Right, okay. All right. Um and um you know, I think I think more than actual situations, it was the it was like this this sort of I, I feel like situations have an emotional timeline. Right. And it was more, um, it wasn't that I needed to go like, oh, I've experienced this actual situation. It was like, oh, have I experienced that like arc of, of emotion? Have I experienced that sort of time like right. emotion? So, um, yeah, although they did not, you know, completely exactly. match yeah. up, um, yeah, there were some things that I was like, yeah, I can, I can take something that I've experienced and I can go further with it, or I can come back with Cool. Other questions? Um, is that here? Yeah, this question is, is uh, addressed to you in terms of filmmaking and how that's changed. Um, and the economy of filmmaking has dramatically changed to the point where um, it's difficult to make a movie. I think I talked to the shooter um, this past year, the average indie film makes $30,000. So, and that's the real fact that people want to talk about. Um, how has that affected this film, your distribution plan, um, and filmmaking for you as, as a director? Well, you have to be. Uh you have to be really smart about what you do. You, know, you can't like go off and do, uh, you know, the, you know, a project just because it's a passion project. But you really have to think of the, 
you know, the business side of things. And we, you know, we finance our films uh, with private equity up to now. So it's very much, you know, we have a responsibility to the people that put the money into the film. So, you know, it's not, we, we all just have to be sure that, you know, we're obviously doing the film for the right reason. I mean, you know, up to now, I've never, I haven't sold out yet. I'm not saying I won't sell out. <laughs> but I have, you know, like to me, every movie that I make, you know, uh, regardless of what success it's had, I've made for the same reasons. I've been into the material. It's the kind of movie that I want to see, you know, uh, out there. Um, but you got to be smart. You know, you have to be, you got to kind of line up the elements and kind of line up the budget and figure out, okay, are we going to be able to, you know, make our money back? Are we going to be able to make the investors' money back? Because if you can, then it's very difficult to ask them for money for the next film. That's all it's about, is, is trying to get the next film going. Um, and you know, we like the independent space because we can make the films we want to make and we have a, we have a really good team. Uh, you know, it's not like we're making movies in a bubble. We do have a really good team and we, you know, we, we don't, we definitely discuss what we're doing and give plenty of notes. And, but at the end of the day, we make the films that we want to make the way we want to make them. So, but yeah, the whole distribution thing is just really difficult right now, especially for like really, 